So let's have a look at the problems of trying to determine if organisms are of the same species. There was an exam question in the 2022 external exam uh, in the QCAA biology exam that started by defining biology, biological species concept and then asked for another way of defining species and then it asked for limitations of the biological species concept and of the other method that you identified. So let's have a look at the different species concepts and the different limitations of each. So also the best way to think about this is by also looking at the, the benefits or the advantages of each because they do all have their role but they also have their limitations. Firstly, the biological species concept is probably the one you know most. Basically it defines uh, space, a species as a group of organisms that can successfully interbreed and produce fertile offspring. So that's different to a uh, hybrid, an interspecies hybrid like a mule, which is a, a, an interbreeding or a hybrid of a donkey and a horse. Now it produces a, an organism that is infertile, it's unable to reproduce. So uh, the biological species concept is has real advantages in being able to determine quite easily if organisms of the same species based on whether they can produce fertile offspring. However, there's limitations of it as well. What happens when we have extinct species that we cannot uh, observe, we cannot test whether they can reproduce and produce fertile offspring? It's impossible. Also, organisms like bacteria that reproduce asexually we're not able to determine if they're the same species based on the biological species concept because they're unable to produce fertile offspring through interbreeding because they don't interbreed. They produce asexually through binary fission. So, given that we can't, uh, given that there's limitations, that's why we have different species concepts. So, a, a solution is the phylogenetic species concept which basically is looking at the similarity between two organisms based on their genetics. So uh, it's a way of being able to compare the genetics of two organisms to determine the, how similar the genes are, how similar the, the genetics are, to be able to determine the evolutionary history. So it's ideal for organisms that are, say, asexually reproduce, like our bacteria, because we can test their, or, or we can extract the DNA, we can compare them. However, again, it's no good when we've got extinct species, fossil evidence, where we're not able to extract DNA. So what can we do then? Well, we need to rely on their morphology. So the morphological species concept basically determines if organisms are of the same species based on similar morphological features. Now, morphology is basically just physical structures. Do they look the same? And so that could be that can be helpful when we have fossils because we're making a comparison based on what they look like. However, it also has its limitations because morphology can be misleading. Take the dolphin and the shark, for example, where they're both are sort of grey in colour, have a, a, a sleek body shape. They all both have you know pectoral fins, dorsal fins, and the tail fins. They kind of look quite similar. However, the dolphin is a mammal and the shark is a fish. So uh, they're, they're really not that closely related at all. And so it can be quite misleading, particularly if we're looking at fossils that aren't particularly well preserved. Now there is one more, well there's actually multiple species concept, but here's one more that we can look at. And that's the ecological species concept. And that looks at whether organisms are of the same species by whether they are adaptable to a particular set of resources or niche and therefore they're competing for the same resources. So the, the more they compete, the more likely they are from being from the same species because as we know, the uh, competitive exclusion principle states that no two species are able to occupy the same niche at the same time. So if they've got exactly the same adaptation such that they're competing for exactly the same niche, well, it's more than likely that they're the same species. However, again, there's limitations. 
And this, in, in this case, is about convergent evolution. Because we've seen examples where organisms or different species develop adaptations to occupy the same niche, but they're actually entirely different. Take, for example, uh, so we're talking about analogous structures or, or species with analogous structures, like the wing of a bird and the wing of an insect. Structurally, they're entirely different and they, they have entirely different evolutionary histories, but they have developed adaptations to both be able to fly and possibly both be able to uh, use the same or similar food sources. So they're essentially occupying the same niche, but they came about it entirely different ways. So clearly they're not the same species, even though they're occupying the same niche. So each of these concepts has some advantages, but they also have limitations 